Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks have not tendered qualifying offers to RFAs Yuho Lamico, Matthew Highmore, and Justin Bailey. Now they are all unrestricted free agents. I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, July the 11th. If you're new, here's what you should do hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. A couple of hours ago, I vlogged about the opening of the Canucks development camp, a chance for all of their prospects from the past three or so draft years to get together at UBC, make plans, lay plans, make uh, development plans, evaluate first impressions, all those things. And all that's still true. But the Canucks made a, made a couple of moves, or a couple of non-moves, I should say, that might pave the way for some of these prospects to get into the lineup. Maybe not this season, but in a couple of years or in the near future at least. So let's talk about them. First, let's talk about who the Canucks did qualify. Firstly, they did not, you have to qualify your restricted free agents. An unrestricted free agent, a UFA, it means basically if you don't resign them, they go and they can sign wherever. And usually when you played X amount of years or you're 27 years old. Restricted free agent means you haven't played your seven years in the league yet, you're not 27. And basically you're under the team's control from a standpoint of they have the first right of refusal, they have the first chance to to negotiate with you, but they have to extend what's called a qualifying offer, which generally is the last uh, equivalent to the last year of your of your your previous contract. Actually, that was the Brock Best rule. They've changed it where now it's more of an average of, of your last contract. But regardless, a team will extend a qualifying offer to retain the rights to negotiate with you exclusively. But if a team does not extend that qualifying offer, then they become that player becomes an unrestricted free agent. The other thing is, if you extend a qualifying offer, that doesn't mean that you are stuck, you are locked into that contract. It means, it, it really uh, says, at the bare minimum, we know we're gonna get, get you for one year at this amount, but we can negotiate otherwise. Having said all of that, they've only done that with one player now. They didn't have to do it with Brock Besser. They, they would have had to if they didn't have that new contract, but as we know, he signed that three year, $20 million contract about a week and a half ago. So today, the Canucks did extend a qualifying offer to goaltender Michael DiPietro. Now, DiPietro is being the subject of a lot of talk recently because we know that Spencer Martin signed a two-year contract to basically be the backup for the Canucks for the next two seasons. We know that Arthur Silovs has essentially passed Michael DiPietro on the death chart in Abbotsford. And we know the Canucks, it would behoove them to bring in, uh, I love that word, behoove. It would behoove them to bring in a veteran goaltender to battle with Silovs and DiPietro for time in Abbotsford. So we get all of that. So there are rumors that maybe the Canucks would want to move on from Michael DiPietro. Maybe he's not panning out the way that they want him to, but at least, I wouldn't say they've kicked that can down the road, but they have a bit more time to evaluate and because they did extend Michael DiPietro a qualifying offer. So that means he can either accept that or they can negotiate another deal as well. Three players that the Canucks did not extend qualifying offers to are Justin Bailey, Yuho Lamico, and Matthew Highmore. Now the Justin Bailey one, not a surprise. He played in 14 games for the Canucks, had zero points, and I've always said, um, you know, likable guy, uh, works hard, really fast skater, really fast skater, one of the fastest I've seen on the Canucks, but I would say his hands and his hockey IQ don't necessarily match his speed, and, and that's why he didn't have any points in 14 games. That's why he was a bit of a liability defensively. And oftentimes he would gain the zone with the puck, but not a lot would happen once he gained the zone. So no surprise with Justin Bailey not being extended a qualifying offer. So he is now a free agent, will be a free agent on Wednesday. He can go wherever he wants. The other two guys though, I'm gonna switch arms here, I'm a little tired. The other two guys though, I'm slightly surprised. Yuho Lamico and Matthew Highmore. Both of obviously restricted free agents, and they didn't make a lot of money last year. I think uh, Lamico maybe was 750. Uh, Highmore was in the same area, 750. I know they both made under 800 grand. So really, you're not spending a lot of money, even if you do qualify them for this basically the same amount or, or a, a tiny bit of a surplus. And when they were paired together with Tyler Mott before Mott got traded to the Rangers, they were a very effective fourth line. They were low maintenance. They could kill penalties a little bit, uh, although our penalty kill wasn't that great. But most importantly, at five on five, they were a great matchup line. They didn't give up a lot defensively. They pitched in the odd goal once in a while, 
not the odd goal, the occasional goal, you know what I mean, and not a strange goal. And overall, they were kind of a, kind of a, you know, a, re a revelation for us in that um, cheap, made a bit more, but cheap, a cheaper line that you could rely on in every situation. Now that line kind of uh, lost a bit of its sparkle once Tyler Mott was indeed traded to the Rangers, but you still had Lamico worked hard, Matthew Highmore worked hard, and it's funny, whenever I get asked to project my lines for next season, I always end off with Lamico, Highmore, and someone like a Lockwood or someone on the fourth line. But it looks like the Canucks might not even bring them back. Now maybe Highmore's got some speed, but maybe they want more speed, maybe they want more sandpaper, Maybe they want more grit. Maybe they simply don't see Lamico and Highmore fitting into their plans. Now, Lamico came over in October with Noah Juleson, who they did uh, sign to a new contract, in the trade for Ole Ulevi. So it looked like a really good trade at the time. It still looks like a really good trade. And Lamico played 75 games this season, had 15 points, seven goals, eight assists in those 75 games. And he played basically as the fourth line center. His, off, his um, you know, face-offs improved as the season went on. So I thought he was going to be, he, I thought he was serviceable, especially as a fourth line center. So slightly surprised that they didn't extend a qualifying offer to Lamico. And then with Matthew Highmore, you have a guy who works his butt off, can skate well, not afraid to get in the dirty areas. It has a bit of sandpaper, not a lot of sandpaper, but it has a bit of sandpaper. And he only played in 46 games and he had 12 points. He had five goals in seven six, but 12 points in 46 games, you know, that's fine for a fourth liner. And like I said, with Highmore and, and uh, Lamico together, I thought they were pretty good, especially with Mott when he was here. And Highmore was even featured in some of the late season um, press conferences. Not that that's a reason why you keep him, but he seemed to me at least to be a part of the Canucks plan. Now, just because you don't extend them a qualifying offer doesn't mean you can't re-sign them. Yes, they become unrestricted free agents, but the Canucks, it's not like they're barred from negotiating with them, but now they just got to compete with 31 other teams where if you did qualify them, then obviously you have exclusive negotiating rights. So um, it's unlikely that Lamico, Highmore, or Bailey come back to the Canucks, but it's not, uh, it's not like they're not allowed to or they're barred from doing so by virtue of not getting a qualifying offer. So bottom line, I'm surprised. I I'm slightly surprised. I'm, I'm not hurt, I'm not disappointed, I'm not sad because if, if they aren't in the, the Canucks plans, obviously Rutherford and Alvin have a plan to, to reshape that fourth line. But admittedly, I'm a tiny bit surprised given that I thought they were serviceable, especially for the money they were getting paid. But Canucks fans, I'd love to know what you think. Are you surprised with the decision not to qualify Lamico and Highmore and the, by extension, the decision to qualify Michael DiPietro? Let me know in the comments below. Um, as always, thank you to my sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss, and City Experts Real Estate Group, Jason Luminous Teams. Thanks to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame members and franchise members as well. Subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to, become a member or upgrade if you like to, leave a tip, a super thanks if you like to, and definitely leave a comment below your thoughts on this wave of announcements. If you made it this far in the video, eight and a half minutes in, um, what should we talk about today? Uh, you know, I, earlier I was talking about my roller hockey game, but then um, I have a softball game before that. So type in the word dinger. That's, that's a home run. I think I've made you do this once before, but type in dinger, because that's what I want to get tonight. D-I-N-G-E-R, that is a slang term for a home run. So type that in, and then I know that I made it. you made it to the end of this video, and I appreciate you as always. Okay, friends, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks, go.